Hello, and welcome to Film Forum, monthly film web series. I'm Spencer Bickett, reporter at the Brainerd Dispatch, here with my colleague, Zach Kaiser. Hi. Zach, are you excited? Definitely. You ready to go? Let's go. Hopefully this isn't our last episode. <laughs> so, for our first episode here, we decided we would take a look back at the first half of Blockbuster movie season, one of the biggest parts of movie studios' calendars. So... We won't talk about Furious 7 because Zach didn't see it. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is kind of the start. So we'll start up with Avengers Age of Ultron. Came out on May 1st. Bang up opening weekend. 101, 191 million domestic at the box office. 201 million international. Total of 393 million worldwide. Kind of fell short of the first Avengers opening weekend, but it might catch up to its worldwide total. Zach, what did you think? I I didn't care for it quite as much as the original Avengers, but I still think this franchise has a lot of steam to it. Um, it's got a lot of mass appeal. Um, the international setting it wasn't um, they took the setting away from um, New York, like the first Avengers film. Um, I think it makes it more appealable to the international audiences. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think that'll definitely give it a lot more uh, um, going forward. Do you th- if you're Marvel Studios, are you happy with the way the movie performed? Yeah, I mean, you have to take into account it is a sequel. Um, you have a law of diminishing returns. Um, with each sequel, it costs more to produce because the stars um, ask more in their contracts. And um, at the same time, there's less uh, box office returns because like, sequels declining level of interest from the public. Mm-hmm. So. so then two weeks later, we had Mad Max Fury Road came out May 15th. Opening weekend did $45 million at the domestic, $24 million international. Total of $69 million worldwide opening weekend. Um, it's currently sitting at almost $150 million domestic total. Pretty good. Worldwide total, $350 million. Um, again, production budget was, I think, $150 million. So, you know, you think about the marketing costs on top of that. Would you, if you're running the studio that put that out, are you kind of disappointed? Well, no, I would definitely, I would definitely argue the opposite. I mean, for an R-rated film, um, which a lot of studios don't even take the, bother to take the chance on anymore, it did phenomenally well, mm-hmm. and it got a lot of buzz initially after opening. Um, I think uh, it kind of mirrored the first Mad Max film, um, which got a lot of attention um, internationally because of the violence. But this time, it was because of the um, feminist themes, mm-hmm. um, not so much like the overt. Um, uh, feminism, but just sort of the fact that it featured a female character as uh, sort of the main thrust of the plot, which yeah. I thought was really cool. That I mean, that was my takeaway. The movie was called Mad Max, but not really about Max that much. Um, I saw um, Bronson a few years ago starring Tom Hardy. Immediately bought up all the Tom Hardy <laughs> stock I could. I really liked the guy, but since then he hasn't really had that one role Mm -hmm. people thought it was going to be dark knight returns him as bane he spent the whole movie behind a mask yeah we didn't really see much of him since that movie yeah Mm -hmm. i think i think this this might be his breakthrough yeah and Mm -hmm. mad max Fury Road, you know he got to do a lot but he was kind of playing second banana to theron there for a while Mm -hmm. um i think uh another reason um the film did so well is because they um again you had that international mass appeal um, compared to the first film, I actually uh, I had to watch the first original Mad Max uh, with subtitles on because of the thick Australian accents mm-hmm. and like the lingo and stuff. Um, you could barely understand uh, what they were saying sometimes. But th- with this one, um, they definitely toned down the Australia a little bit. Um, you, like you said before, you could barely even tell it was set in Australia. Mm-hmm. And now to finally talk about the Tyrannosaurus Rex-sized dinosaur in the room, Jurassic World came out June 12th. Set every conceivable box office mm-hmm. record there is. Largest domestic opening weekend. Um, made half a billion dollars internationally. Total opening weekend. Currently at a $500 million domestic total. One of only a handful of films to get there. Worldwide total of $1.1 billion. Whoa. Like the dinosaur metaphors don't even come close to capturing just how well this did. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, what, what did you actually think of the movie? I thought it was okay. I had I fully admit I haven't really seen any of the originals. Well, um, <laughs> I know. I really like Chris Pratt. I just wish he would have had more to do there. You yeah. know, after a certain, I was sitting there and I think maybe with 20 minutes to go in the movie, you know, they're trying to save these kids and I'm just 
I didn't really connect with a whole lot of the characters. What did you think? I agree. They didn't really spend that much time um, on characters, but I think it's more of an action-y set piece. So I, th maybe they weren't that, not necessarily what they were going for, um, but at the same time, you still expect a little bit of character development and that even that minimum level wasn't even there. Um, they used like cliches to describe each characters, and um, the, what really got me about the film was just the product placement, just so distractingly like the that that that, that movie was really more about Mercedes Benz and Coke than it was about dinosaurs. True, true. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think it is about these big ticket, these big box office numbers? Why do you think they appeal? Why do you think they make so much money at the box office? Well, I mean, uh, Jurassic World and Avengers were kind of uh, part of a trend. Um, Maybe good, maybe bad. You're seeing uh, kind of more generic uh, films that focus on the action, you stuff blowing up side, not necessarily on the character development side, like I said before. Um, that I mean, it it could be good. It help it could help revitalize the industry a little bit, um, and it also could help uh, sort of bridge the gap, make movies more accessible to people um, across cultures. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you have it more generic. Maybe you're shutting out some of those diverse cultural aspects. Like there weren't a lot of people of color in Jurassic World. Um, same in uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in Mad Max, um, maybe kind of the same thing, but you have more. Um, yeah, Mad Max is actually really cool because I think uh, it helps um, it helps re uh, encourage studios to take a risk on maybe the more edgy, um, mm -hmm. more daring R-rated films. In some ways, the Fast and Furious franchise has become the diverse blockbuster series in Hollywood. Um, so, and just to sign off here, we got all these numbers from Box Office Mojo, which also indicates that studios take home about 55% of their domestic haul and it's a significantly smaller chunk internationally so so they have a lot more on the line than you might realize mm -hmm. and this is it's a jaded way to look at it but this is the season where those studios have to make their money so they can put out their award films in the fall and the winter mm -hmm. so here that was it that was our first episode of the film forum hope you enjoyed it we'll be back next time with the preview of the movies coming out in july see you then guys bye